Virtually every data science team today is utilizing GitHub, so having at least foundational knowledge is essential. In this video, I'm gonna run you through exactly what GitHub is, what the difference is between GitHub and something called Git, and then we are going to visually run through some of the key things that make it such a useful tool for data science. I've also got a free downloadable GitHub glossary for data science, so stick around until the end of the video and I'll let you know how to get your hands on that. Alright, so let's get straight into this. And there are really two parts to this story. There is Git and there is GitHub. GitHub is a website, or at least a front end, that allows us to utilize the functionality of this tool called Git. And while most of us just refer to all of this by the name GitHub, like I said a second ago, GitHub itself is really just the front end to all of the cleverness that is Git. And there are two main features of Git that make it such a useful tool for data science. The first is that Git is what is known as a version control system, which simply put is a system that stores a log of changes to files. Think of it as a filing system for every draft version of a document you've made for a particular project, right from creation through to completion. In data science, when creating code for a project, we often end up with many different versions as we work on it over time. For me, generally, this is something like ML code v1, ML code v2, and then ML code final. Then ML code final v2, ML code final v2a, and eventually, if I'm in good form, perhaps I end up with the disgrace that is ML code final underscore final. <laughs> it makes me feel filthy just reading that, but we have all been there and like I say, I am certainly guilty of it too. The beauty of a version control system is that it keeps track of all of this for us so we can just make changes and updates as required and each time a version of the document is recorded. If for some reason we need to move back and forth between versions as they're all saved, we can easily do so. So imagine you find there was a big old bug in the latest version version of your code. You could either mash your way through it all searching for this phantom bug and then patch in some dodgy fixes, or if the error was due to a previous change in the code, you could easily revert back to the version prior to the mistake being created. Make any fixes and go on your merry way from there. This can be so, so useful and trust me, can save a lot of data scientist tears. Now, the second very useful aspect of Git and GitHub is that they allow seamless collaboration between team members. So imagine that you and I are on the same data science team and we're collaborating on some machine learning project. We try to think of ways that we can both work on the project at the same time. One idea we have is to both code up different parts of the process and then try to put them together at the end. But this ends up being tricky as some parts that you are working on might depend on some parts that I'm working on and vice versa. Another idea we have is to both just code up everything in our own way and then we try to see who did the best job at the end. But after a friendly chat with our project manager, we uh, we decide that this would be kind of ineffective. Efficient. So what do we do? Well, if we were to utilize Git and GitHub, I could create what is known as a repository, and this would contain all the files and code we need for our project. Once we have this, I could start coding away on what is known as the master or main branch of this repository. Now, when you are ready to start collaborating on the project, you could create a separate branch to work on. For all intents and purposes, you can think of this other branch as your own temporary copy of the repository. Officially, it's not not explicitly a copy that would be known as a fork, a branch is more like a separate track within the repository. Either way, the key point is that within your branch, you can make and test changes to code and you could add a new code, but these changes and modifications would only exist in your branch. They would never disrupt or alter the master or main branch. So I could be happily coding away on my version of the code, making updates and changes, and you could be doing the same. After a while, perhaps you feel that your changes are ready to go and you want to incorporate them 
them into the code that I've been working on. To do this, you would submit what is known as a pull request. And a pull request is where you are essentially requesting that I, the person in charge of the master or main branch, <laughs> pull your changes and modifications into my master branch. Once you have submitted this pull request, GitHub allows me to easily see the changes and additions against the code that I have. And if I'm happy with those changes and additions, I can merge them into the master or main branch. Now, on occasion, a problem can arise when our two branches contain different changes to the same area of a file. For example, if we both modified the same line of code and then tried to merge the two files, Git wouldn't know which to pick. And this is what is known as a merge conflict. In the case of a merge conflict, I as the owner of the master or main branch would be presented with some options to resolve the conflict. Once I've decided how this conflict can be resolved, GitHub will allow the merge to take place. Now, so far in this video, I've just spoken about how we'd both be coding away on the files within each of our branches. But what exactly are we using to code? GitHub exists in the cloud and is mainly used for file storage and version control like we've discussed, rather than having the functionality for coding itself. The most common way to do this is to provide ourselves access to the cloud-based repositories on our local computer. And we do this using a process known as cloning, where we, funnily enough, make a clone of the repository on our PC, where it essentially exists as a folder of files like any other that we have on our hard drive. We can then work away on these files like we would normally, and when we are ready to upload them back to the cloud-based repository, we can either drag and drop them in on the GitHub website, or we could use some clever command line instructions to push the updated files back up. Both of these approaches result in the same outcome, it's really just down to preference and efficiency. All right, there you go, your intro to Git and GitHub for data science. Now, if you would like to learn how to use GitHub in practice, as well as learn all the other key skills required for success in data science, please do take a look at my program, Data Science Infinity. It is the ultimate way to learn the skills that hiring managers actually need and want, while getting unlimited and dedicated guidance, support, and mentorship along the way to ensure you reach your goals and land an amazing role in this exciting field. Now, I mentioned at the start of the video that I have a free downloadable GitHub glossary for data science, and you can find a link to that in the notes below this video. GitHub can be so confusing when you're first starting out with it, so this will be a great resource to keep you on track. This has been 5-Minute Data Science, and I will see you in the next video.